This video is brought to you today by Ghost Tags. This is my own company that I started because I wanted a glow in the dark air tag case. These things are awesome. You can stick them on your backpack, on your dog's collar, and you will be able to find it at night. We've got two colors, blue and green. They've got great reviews. Go check them out. Links to them down below. Now on to the video. Hey guys, what's up? I'm Slim and you're watching Slimothy TV. In this video, I have a super exciting one for you guys. We're going to be going over 25 plus brand new features that are in iOS 17. And these are not tiny little features. These are big ones that you guys are going to want to know about. So sit back, relax, enjoy the video. We're going to have much more in-depth coverage of iOS 17 uh, tomorrow and the next day. So make sure to subscribe right now so you don't miss those videos. On top of that, we've got other videos going over the event from today that are coming up. But let's get started here with number one, and that is with iMessage. There have been some awesome new changes to iMessage, so I'm gonna open it up here, and right off the bat here, it looks pretty familiar, right? Well, there are some changes. First off, one of the biggest ones you're gonna notice if you do get this beta, press the plus over here, and you've got a brand new menu that pops right out for you. You can easily click on one of these if you wanna choose it. You can also scroll down and see even more. This is something you're probably gonna interact with on a daily basis once you get iOS 17, so it's nice to get used to it now. Uh, look at those animations. They all look so smooth and nice. This is one of the first things you're going to notice. Now, the next thing that's really cool are audio transcriptions right here for voice messages. So if you send your, someone a voice message, it will automatically transcribe it for you. This is going to be so helpful for those times when you maybe you're at work or something. Someone sends you a voice memo and you can't really listen to it right now. Uh, so this will transcribe it so you don't have to play it. This is an awesome feature that I didn't even know I wanted until now. So thank you for that, Apple. Now, this next feature is still in iMessage here, and it is the check-in feature. So if you are wanting to make sure that your friend arrives where they're supposed to arrive, you can have them set up this check-in. I could also see this being big with uh, parents, you know, with their kids. If they're going somewhere and maybe they don't want to have find my friends on all the time, but maybe just for a one-off visit, they're going somewhere and maybe it's a little sketchy, you might want to have them turn this on. So as you can see, it says your friend will be notified automatically when you get to your destination iPhone will keep up with your progress. If you aren't making progress towards your destination, we prompted and have 15 minutes to respond. So we'll continue here. Here are your choices. You can either share limited or full detail. So this is kind of like a dead man switch for a lack of a better word. But basically, if you don't arrive as expected, the iPhone will prompt you. If you don't respond to that prompt, the iPhone will notify your friend and share the data you've chosen. So if you want to share full information, if you don't reply, which is probably what I would recommend to be the safest option, um, then you would pick one or the other, but full seems to be the way to go. And here is where it explains it even more. It says your friend is notified when you send the check-in. So your destination and approximate travel time will be shared. When you arrive, they will be notified automatically and the check-in will end. And lastly, if you are delayed and do not respond when prompted, if you are delayed or the iPhone places an emergency SOS call, you will be prompted. If you do not respond within 15 minutes of being prompted, the friend will be notified. So that's kind of how that works just to clear the air. I know a lot of people were confused about this right when Apple announced it. So hopefully this helps you uh, kind of get an idea of how it works. But that seems like a very helpful feature. I am so glad that Apple has implemented that. Those are the features I really appreciate Apple implementing. Now, the next feature of iMessage that's super cool is you can now swipe to the right on different messages like this and instantly reply. So this will create a thread. It's very much like Telegram where you can swipe to reply to someone. It makes it so much easier than having to tap and hold. Like before, it was so annoying to have to do that to reply. So now you can just swipe to the right. So just like this and you get your chance to reply to that person. This is a huge feature that you will probably use daily. It seems small, but it's a nice quality of life improvement. Another new feature in iMessage is that you can now apply filters when you're searching for a message. You can also now create a sticker from any image that you want. One of the big ones here that I just noticed, uh, because I've actually been using this, uh, a lot of YouTubers just downloaded this and then spat off a bunch of stuff that Apple already said. I'm actually using it first before I make this video. One thing that's really cool, the website sends you a verification code. If you use autofill, it can automatically delete that text from your phone completely. Completely. So I've been using that quite a bit when I'm logging in. It's very nice because it just instantly deletes the entire thread. I don't have to see that spam of, you know, those random six digit codes and stuff. All right, enough with iMessage. Let's talk about interactive widgets. I can't really show you this right now because I don't use Apple Music. I like Spotify. But if you do add a widget, you can pause and play. You can also control devices in your home from the home control widget if you put it on your home screen. Now there are a bunch of new wallpaper for you to choose from in iOS 17, but if we scroll down just a bit and we just click on one of these collections, there's actually a light and dark mode now. So you can choose between which one you want to have on your phone. This is something that's brand new, it wasn't on the other versions. I know a lot of you guys are wallpaper fanatics, so you're gonna like this. Another thing they've changed is you can now change the font width right here very easily. You don't have to choose from one of these predefined ones. That's one of my complaints before. Now you can make it super fat or super skinny if you want, or somewhere in between, a little bit thick like that. That's nice. 
All right, but what about that new standby feature? So if you go into settings, you can turn standby on or off. I'm gonna put a picture up on the screen of what this looks like. Basically, it allows you to use your phone when it's in landscape mode on a nightstand being charged. Uh, it can be used as a clock and show a couple widgets. It's kind of overrated to be honest with you guys, but it could be nice, especially like if you're traveling and you're at a hotel and they don't have a cl alarm clock in the room. I've been to quite a few of those recently, no alarm clocks. So you might wanna use your phone on a little stand at night. This would be perfect for that. All right, so as you guys know, I'm kind of an AirTag fanatic. Uh, they are really cool. I put them on all kinds of stuff. And you guys know that I sell AirTag cases on Amazon, links down below, shameless plug right there. But there is a new feature that I've been wanting forever with AirTags, and you can now share them with other people. There's now a button within Find My, if you click on the AirTag, you can do share it and you can share it with other people. So if you share it with, let's say a spouse, that way the other person will not get tracking notifications. So it doesn't say, hey, this AirTag's tracking you. And also they can now see it. So if you have a car that's shared or a bag that's shared, or I don't know, anything you wanna share uh, that has an AirTag in it, you can now share it with your spouse or your friend. Super cool. I am so glad that Apple included that. This improves AirTags quite a bit. All right, the next feature I can't show you, but if you have Apple Music and you have CarPlay and you're in the car and everyone in there has iOS 17 or later, you can now collaborate on the playlist. So you don't need an aux cable anymore. <laughs> you just need current up-to-date iPhones and uh, you can collaborate with different playlists and change songs and play whatever you want. So that's pretty cool. All right, so this next one, I can't really show you either just because of personal information, but if you go to the phone app now, you can create a contact poster. Now it's first gonna have you set one up for yourself, but you can set them up for other people. So when they call in, your phone doesn't just look like some outdated iPhone. It looks nice and modern and has that person's profile picture or whatever you choose. Now, probably the best new feature of iOS 17 so far is live voicemail. This is going to be incredibly, incredibly useful. Basically, if someone's calling you and let's say you don't wanna pick up because you don't know who it is, or you just don't wanna talk right this second unless you know it's important, when someone's leaving you a voicemail, it will live transcribe it on the screen as they're saying it, and then you can click pick up while they're talking to get into the call. That is awesome. That is innovation right there. No more missing calls from the doctor's office when you're not sure of who the number is. Uh, you can now pick up immediately when they say, this is so-and-so from so-and-so's doctor's office, hit pick up and start talking to them right away. Next up, you can now share pass keys and passwords through iCloud Keychain. If you use that, you can now do that. I personally use one password, so I don't have this to set up to show you guys, but if you do use iCloud, you can now share passwords with a friend or family member. It is nice and secure. Now, if you use the mail app and you know how some applications will send you a verification code to your email, it can now pull those verification codes automatically through your email and put them into the app. So that is really cool. Unfortunately for me, I use ProtonMail for most of my stuff. Uh, so I don't think it's gonna pull from there. It's gonna use the mail app, but hey, I think most people use the mail app, so you're gonna like that feature. Let's say you're out and about at a bar and you meet someone really cool and you wanna exchange contact information, but everyone knows business cards get lost. No one really likes them. Well, Apple has a solution for that. It is called name drop. So all you have to do is put your phone close to the other phone running iOS 17 like this, and you can share your contact information just like that. No more fiddling through you know, the contacts app on your phone. You just tap your phone to the other one, hit accept. Your contact information is shared just like that. Super easy, super quick. The best part is this is not only for name drop, this can also be used for airdrop. So yes, you can now take another phone, another person that you wanna share a photo with or just anything, maybe a coworker, you wanna show them a funny meme. You can put your phones close together, choose the file and share it. And it will then pop up on their phone super easy. I can see this being used a lot for, you know, if something funny happens on a ring doorbell and you download it, you want to share it with someone, just tap your phone to theirs and they've got the video. Now here's a feature for airdrop as well. Have you ever been airdropping someone and you accidentally leave the Bluetooth range of 30 feet and the airdrop stops? That's hella annoying. Now, if you are airdropping someone and you walk away, so this person accidentally leaves your house, drives home, you can continue that airdrop sending over the internet. Apple will now intelligently switch to uploading it end-to-end -end encrypted over iCloud basically to the other person's phone. So that is super cool. I do need to look more into the security and privacy aspects of that just because it sounds a little sus, but they do say that it's end-to-end -end encrypted and it will go to the other person's phone. So you don't have to wait for a 20 gigabyte file and stand close to each other you know, for 30 minutes while you're waiting for it. Now the other person's free to go and uh, you can continue that airdrop. So Apple has completely changed how Siri works. You no longer have to say, hey blank. You can now just say blank. So I could say, Siri, what's the weather? And it would tell me the weather. I can also then say, how about tomorrow? 
and it would be smart enough to give me that. I wouldn't have to say Siri again. It would just do it. I personally have this off, as you guys can see, just for privacy and security concerns. You no longer have to say, hey, in front of it. So it'll be a little bit easier to activate. Now, whether or not that's a good thing, I don't know. I feel like a lot of Siri is going to be getting activated on accident. So if you're typing something like this and autocorrect's about to change it and you press space, you can actually still click on it and go straight back to what you typed if autocorrect got it wrong. So sometimes you're typing something, you know you typed it right, but autocorrect is so freaking annoying and it keeps changing it. You can now go straight back and it will learn a lot better than before. I've already noticed huge improvements with autocorrect. So if you have issues with it before, which I think we all did, always changes the word to ducking. We all know that. <laughs> Hopefully it will be a little bit better now. It seems to be a little bit more intelligent with their new autocorrect model. Now, Apple mentioned the journaling app that is not out yet. It will come later. So I can't show you that yet. And something that's pretty interesting, I always use private browsing on the phone just so it doesn't store cookies on any website. <laughs> you now have to unlock it by default with Face ID. Uh, so you can get into there. So that's kind of a cool feature. You can turn it off in settings if you don't like it. I will probably turn it off just because it's overkill. I don't need to hide anything. I just don't like cookies being stored from various websites for tracking purposes. All right, so those were a ton of new features. If you guys know of any, drop them down below and let me know. Let's quickly talk about bugs that I've had. I have a huge bug all across iOS where if I'm trying to look for something, the keyboard will not show up. Right now it is, but sometimes it's blank here as well as in Telegram and other messaging apps keep that in mind. Battery does not seem very good at all, but we will see. I have a couple stuttering issues on the phone as well as um, lock screen issues where it stays dark when it should be lit up and letting me in and some small crashes and stuff like that. Nothing crazy yet. All the banking apps work, financial institutions. I haven't had any issues. So the only other thing would be like Oura Ring. I had to repair it, but it had all my data um, and I had to re-sign into a couple things. But realistically, this is a very stable beta so far. I know there's not a whole lot changed, but um, for beta one, it's not bad. I'm gonna make videos going over everything else released at WWDC 23 today. So be sure to subscribe, lots more coming. I got a lot of filming to do tonight. Thumbs up, subscribe, peace.